Hey everyone and welcome back and in this episode we're going to give you some tips for planning your trip here to Disney's Fort Wilderness Campground and Resort at Walt Disney World Florida. Disney World! Yeah. people are surprised when we talk about that we're going to camp at Walt Disney World. And that's because when they think of Walt Disney World, they think they need to stay in one of those big resorts. And what people don't realize is that Disney's Fort Wilderness has actually been here since the, the beginning. It was built back in 1971 and it was one of the original resorts here at Walt Disney World. And it is a campground. So you can come and bring your rig, you can camp like we did, uh, you can camp in a tent. They do have cabins if you're not into tent camping or or want to bring your rig with you and um, they have like over 800 campsites and 400 cabins so there's a lot of stuff to do here and that's what we're going to talk about today so let's get into it okay for tip one it's really making the decision on how you want to stay at Fort Wilderness as Liz mentioned they have tent camping there's cabins you can bring your rig uh, if you want uh, we've been fortunate enough to try all three uh, so we we first did the tent camping, which was really cool. We did it not in the summertime. No, we did it in the way fall, too hot in the summer, winter guys. time. <laughs> uh, it was great. We also did uh, the cabins for for one stay while we were here, and your parents joined us. So the cabins are actually really cool because you can host, a, you can have a lot of people, a lot of friends, a lot of family, mm -hmm. uh, and kind of enjoy the cabins and still everything else. And the cabins are fully equipped. They've got living rooms, kitchens. Um, they sleep up to about six people. Patios with chairs and grills. So they're really awesome. Awesome. They are more expensive, but like you said, you can kind of share the cost among a group of people. It's a lot of fun. Or you can bring your rig. <laughs> and so we, this trip, we were able to bring our rig, our Class A here with us, mm -hmm. and we have loved it. Yeah. Um, it's been on our bucket list for a long time to bring our rig here to Fort Wilderness. And, and here we are, we're finally enjoying it. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of different types of campsites you can have with your rig. You can have uh, no hookups. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, so if, you... if you're doing tents or dry camping or a pop-up trailer, those are the least expensive ones. They start at about $60 a night, mm -hmm. which is really the cheapest way to stay at Walt Disney World. If you want to get all the benefits... It's of... an insider tip. Yeah, if you want to get all the benefits of staying at a Disney resort, like the extra magic hours, things like that, and but you don't want to spend a lot of money, 60 bucks a night, you can camp in a tent or bring a pop-up and super cheap you get all the same benefits as those people paying hundreds of dollars at the resort <laughs> yeah uh, or, or you can have a full uh, hookup campsite as well which is mm -hmm. what we opted for this trip yeah. uh, and those are of course great yeah they started about $90 or so a night but then they have different styles of them you can get more deluxe versions that have just more space bigger patios you can also get preferred locations you know there's different areas in the park that are closer to the amenities so you can pay more for different sites but what's really great about it is they're super clean well maintained there's lots of space between the sites yeah there's trash space, cans too. literally like every space so I mean super clean and it's just yeah. it's the Disney vibe you see yeah. the kids on the family on bikes and everything like that on the golf carts it's it's, it's been great yeah. they've got um, they've got cable here the electricity everything is super well maintained with the electrical boxes and they even have uh, hoses here too, extra hoses for you for water and stuff. So it's just, it's, it's a really nice it's, facility. It's Disney, it's top notch. Yeah. So it's yeah. pretty great. All right, so tip number two for planning your visit here to Disney Sport Wilderness is to make sure that you take some time to do your research and build out a great itinerary for your visit here to Disney World and know in advance what you want to do. You can't just show up and think that you're going to, you know, get the most out of it unless Magic you're... happens and <laughs> it just... Duh, Unless you're really there. freewheeling like that and you don't have high expectations. Because the fact is there's a lot to do at Disney World and you do need to put some time into planning your itinerary. Now we do have some sample itineraries that we'll link to and make sure to link in the blog post here below in the description. Um, but just to give you a bit of an overview, if you don't know, there are four different theme parks here at Walt Disney World. You have the Magic Kingdom, which is the one with the castle and Dumbo and Space Mountain and all that. Then you have Epcot and you have Hollywood Studios and Animal Kingdom. So there's four theme parks there. And if you wanted to spend a day at each park, that's obviously four days right there. Don't forget about the water park. Yes, there's also the water parks. Disney World has two water parks, Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach, and they're both super fun, highly recommended. 
So if you're here during a warm season and you want to go to a water park, you'll want to build that in too. It's um, pretty much year round here. Yeah, and <laughs> don't forget there's also Disney Springs. Disney Springs is their outdoor shopping and entertainment and dining complex and it is huge. There's so many restaurants, shops to be explored, they have entertainment, the new NBA experience just opened up and they're also opening up a Cirque du Soleil Disney show there. Um, they had an old one but they're redoing it now. So there are so many activities and things to do in mini golf or regular golf too, which Josh was thinking Be about doing this Beautiful week. courses here, yes. Gorgeous, many of them. So there's so many activities and things to do that you want to take some time and plan that out and make sure that you have space in your itinerary and vacation that you can actually hang out here and enjoy Fort Wilderness, which leads us to tip number three. Tip number three. <laughs> and tip number three is that you make sure you have time to enjoy all the awesome activities at Fort Wilderness. Yeah, there's so much cool stuff to do here. Uh, you could bring your bikes, there's tons of biking trails, walking trails, hiking trails, and of course they have all this fun scheduled events. Uh, there are so many activities here, yeah. guys. It's like a full day of resort activities. If you go down to the Meadows Pool, they have a schedule every day. They have bingo, they have dodgeball. Dodgeball? They, yeah. They have uh, tennis and pickleball and uh, family trivia and all kinds of things going on all day long. They also have archery. You could do a whole archery yep. thing and learn how to do, shoot a bow and arrow. You can rent bikes, you could rent canoes and kayaks, you could or, go fishing. Rent golf carts. That's very popular. You'll see tons of golf carts running through here as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you could easily just bike around too, uh, or rent a golf cart. There's so much that you can yeah. do. Uh, There's don't, also a don't forget about the pool. Oh. You don't oh, forget yeah. about the pool. Yeah. The pool is a heated pool, so even if you come here in the winter time or anything like that, it is very yeah. nice. The pool's great. They got a great slide, hot tub. It's super warm. Uh, and then. I was also mentioning the marina. So you can go down to the marina, you can rent boats, you can rent big pontoon boats for the family, you can rent individual boats, you can go on a fishing excursion. Um, there's a beach down there with sand. It's, it's I mean, and it's all right here. There's, there's it's all right tons here of stuff to do here. Tons yeah. of stuff to do here. So make sure you, oh gosh, we almost forgot. Every single night, they have a campfire sing-along here as well. Yeah. Don't forget about the s'mores, Liz. <laughs> there's s'mores to be made every so, single night. So every, every evening down at the bike barn area, they have a whole campfire and you can go down there and roast s'mores. If you don't have your own s'mores kits, you can buy them there. And you can do a whole campfire sing-along with Chip and Dale. They come out too. And then after that, you have your s'mores, your sing-along, then they show a big movie outside on the big screen under the stars. Yeah. Every night it's a different Disney movie. So The classic ones, we just saw Dumbo the last Dumbo night. The, from 1941. So yeah. uh, it kind of, the new and the old all mixed together, it's really cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So make sure that you schedule time when you're planning your trip here to come to spend time here. You don't have to go off the property every, every single day. day. You'll be so exhausted. Yeah, anyway. so exhausted because there's so much cool stuff to do here. So yeah. make sure that you spend time here in the campground. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. All right, and for our next tip, number four transportation mm -hmm. so actually it's Disney so Disney has transportation down pretty pretty pat so uh, there's all kind of different types of transportation there's buses that run all through Fort Wilderness so you can just hop on a bus go to a different part of the campground uh, there's also of course you can ride bikes and golf carts and things like that if you if you need you can also call Lyft and have your own private car um, but one thing that's really cool is that you can actually take a boat since we're right here on the water as well at the campground You can take boats to other places around the resort and around the property uh, For instance, you can take the boat to the Magic Kingdom, which is really cool. It's super convenient It only takes a few minutes drops you right off at the front entrance. It's a really nice boat ride, too Yeah, and uh, you can also take boats to even the Fort, uh, excuse me, the Wilderness Lodge or the Contemporary Resort mm -hmm. where you can connect to the monorail and you can go to Epcot that way on monorail or you could just, you know, take a bus because they have buses that go to Epcot or Animal Kingdom or anything like that. So, you know, if you have your own transportation, your own car, that's great. But if you don't want to bring your tow car or you don't want to move your RV, you, you don't, don't need have to. to. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty. That's one great thing here about Fort Wilderness and, and being in Disney anywhere mm -hmm. is you get transportation. But it's good to plan it out because there's going to be 20 minute ride here, a 10 minute ride here. So it's good to plan ahead and have at least a little bit of a good idea of how you're going to get to the resorts and how you're going to get to the theme parks and things like that. So 
Uh, tip number four, know your transportation. transportation. All right, so tip number five for planning your visit here to Disney's Fort Wilderness and Walt Disney World is to make sure you plan it well in advance, guys. Uh, this is a highly demanded place to stay, uh, as we found out, because we are staying here the end of January, and we booked this in August. And I literally looked every single week, every single day, to see when we can get in, and that was the closest time that we could get in and get actually five days, a five-day block. Otherwise, it was like one day here, two days here. It was really hard to get five days in a row. So we had to book it in August, and we've talked to people who stay here for a week or two at a time, and they book it a year out. Yeah. So it's really important if you want to stay here that you plan ahead and you make that booking. Even if you need to change it later or you might cancel it or something, you know, book it because it's, it's going to fill up and you're not going to want to find something. Um, but what's also great is it's Disney. So when you book it through their website or their app or anything, then you have access to be able to book your park tickets. You can add on shows and dining plans or any of that kind of stuff. And you do it all through the system. And then when you arrive here, you get your little magic bands and everything. Uh, and then everything's hooked up to it. You know, your campsite information, your your billing, you can charge things back to your to your room <laughs> or your campsite. Or your campsite. And uh, you know, all your park tickets and show stuff and dining plans, everything's on there in one place. You can even book your fast passes, which is what's really important because nowadays with the new fast pass system and all the different resorts here at Walt Disney World, people can book their fast passes um, prior to the trip. I be believe it's about a week or so out before your trip, you can go in and start to plan. So if you have your itinerary and you know you're going to Animal Kingdom on Monday, you can book your tickets in advance for Pandora or any of those big attractions. And for example, we went the other day, Pandora, right when the park opened, was a two hour wait. So, so it's still very popular. It's still a popular ride after two years. So you will want to make sure to go in and get those fast passes for those key rides that you know you want to get because then that way you're set and you know you get a ride. All right, so that's our five tips, um, but we have a bonus tip. Yeah, one more, one more tip, six tips. <laughs> Fort Wilderness is one of the most dog-friendly resorts in all of Disney. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we were able to bring Hana with us, and Hana's had a blast. Oh, she's had so much fun. All of Disney's resorts are technically pet-friendly, but Fort Wilderness is the most friendly because it's outdoors, it's nature. They also have an amazing dog park. Yeah. It's uh, huge. Hannah Hanna was able to make fast friends over there very <laughs> yeah. quickly through other travel dogs and Disney yeah. dogs and she's loved it. It's really easy to get to. We can just walk there from our campsite. It takes us about 10 minutes or so. She can go run and play. There's a dog park for big dogs and small dogs and there's just so many trails. Yeah. Everywhere. There's like so many hiking trails and walking trails and biking trails. We Hannah's gone on bike rides with us and mm -hmm. she's enjoying it. And there's so many cool loops to walk around and check out and meet people and see other rigs and other setups and things like that. So it's extremely pet friendly. So definitely bring your pet. If you want to, we recommend Fort Wilderness. Yeah, yeah. And they do, there is actually a pet, uh, like doggy daycare kind of thing here on property at Disney. Uh, it's called Best Friends Pet Care, I think it is. So if you don't want to leave your an your animals in your rig, uh, you can definitely take them up there. But if you're only been gone for a couple hours or so, you know, some people like to just leave them in their rigs and they're okay. So it's really up to you, but there is an option for a doggy daycare here on site if you want it as well. We actually went to Animal Kingdom and uh, in the morning, early in the morning, and then we were able to come back and actually, because transportation is amazing and we planned out our transportation to figure out timing and everything like that we we're able to actually come back in the middle of the day check on Hana take it to the park have her walk around stretch the old legs a little bit mm -hmm. And then we were able to go back and watch the, the fireworks, fireworks in, the in the evening and yeah. enjoy the evening. So it was a nice little break uh, to come back and even check on her and everything. Yeah. But she uh, she's she's enjoyed her stay. She's loved it and meeting all the other Disney dogs and everything. So bring your pets to Disney, and if you do, bring them to Fort Wilderness. For sure. So that's our five tips on how to plan a great trip to Fort Wilderness. Well, six, thanks yeah. to Hana. Um, but yeah, we, we absolutely love our time at Fort Wilderness. It's our favorite Disney resort here in Orlando. Yeah, of all the resorts I've ever been to of Disney, this is my absolute favorite. And we totally forgot one other really important uh, thing to keep in mind when you go here to come here to Fort Wilderness, and that is the Hoop to Do review. 
Oh, the hoop to do review. Yeah, oh, tip seven. So I guess tip seven, we yeah. totally forgot this. So the hoop to do review is the oldest and longest running dinner show here at Walt Disney World. It's a cool family style dinner uh, with the fried chicken. It's the old wagon trail. Con I mean, it's awesome. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. plan it out. You can actually book ahead of time. You have to book ahead of time. Yep. Make sure you get seats. There's three seatings every night. Make sure that you go to the hoop to do though, guys. It's, it's so much fun and the food is fantastic. So thank you for joining us, and we hope that these tips kind of help you plan out your trip to Fort Wilderness a little bit easier. If you have any other tips that you want to add, please add them in the comments below. And also check out uh, in the description below, we'll include some links to more information and blog posts uh, with more detail about staying at Fort Wilderness and even some of our itinerary samples and things that you can use as well. All right, we'll see you. Bye. All right, bye.